Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More. I'm standing outside my 1980 Aston Martin V8 Volante. I'm uh, going to do a video on it here, show you all about the car. Uh, extremely rare automobiles, not many of them around. I've dreamed of having one since I was a kid, and with values going up so crazy the last few years, I never thought I'd get one, but ended up finding a decent deal here in Colorado. Bought it a few months ago, and just absolutely love the car. So I'll show you the inside, the outside, we'll take the top down, we'll start it up, we'll go on a test drive, and I'll tell you as much as I know about the car. Um, I learned a lot since I bought it, since they only made about 50 of them in 1980 for the entire world. So there's not a whole lot of information out there on them, but they are really cool cars, really fun. It's hard to do it justice in pictures or on video, but uh, just in person, it's just an amazing looking car. Sounds great. Not the fastest car in the world. It's got a three st speed transmission, which doesn't help. But uh, we'll go through all that. Show you the awesome interior, which is just beautiful. And then um, I have some other videos as well. There's my golden doodle over there, but on the Diablo, the Porsche 928. I've got a Lotus Esprit V8 too. So if you want to see those, just search for Mark Ferguson or Invest for More in Exotic Cars and they should pull up. And we'll show you more of this Aston Martin right now. So this car actually appeared in the series Dynasty. It was owned by the designer Bijan, who was friends with Aaron Spelling and he was the producer, creator of Dynasty, and so he let him use the car. And that designer owned the car for a good 20 years, had some other exotic cars, including a Bugatti. And um, really loved this one, talked a lot about it in his interviews and different things. And we have some pictures of it from the show, which is really cool. And then there's a little plate right in there that says it appeared in the series Dynasty. So one of the neat facts about this car, you can see a little bit of the interior, which is just amazing. And he ordered the car new from Aston Martin with some custom wood accents that aren't in the normal ones, like the heating controls, um, some of the other spots. It's all custom. And this car, as you can see, the top is down now, has a power top. You have to kind of put the e-brake on, roll the windows up, give a little bit of gas, and the power top works. So I had no idea how to use it when I first bought the car. Took it home. It's like, uh, I had to call up the mechanic who was working on it before that and figure out how we get that down. But once I figured that out, we we're good to go. But a lot of cool quirks and things in this car that I figured out after owning it a few months. And for those of you wondering, I did pay 125000 for it, which I think is a really good deal. The guy who sold it to me actually has two of these, which is crazy. And I'll tell you the story and how I met him and found the car. And then I am in real estate. So if you're wondering how I can afford this, the Diablo, some of the other vehicles. I'm an investor, agent, house flipper, and I do a lot of videos on that stuff as well. And you can find my blog, investformore.com, which talks all about it too. All right, I'm sitting in the driver's seat now. You can see for a car built in 1980, it's not that bad of a dash. It's got some curve to it. It's not a giant box. All the wood trim is really nice. 36,000 miles. Got all your different gauges here, clock, more wood there, leather everywhere, everything is leather in this car. They say they use three cows to make these cars and I believe it, there's a little plaque for Dynasty, more leather, more wood, the seats which are super comfy. Plenty of room in these cars. Um, I am 6'1", and I mean, if I put the seat all the way back, I can't even reach the pedals hardly. So, plenty of room, plenty of headroom, and really neat cars. It's got some kind of cool features I'll show you. Glove box in here. The little mirror. <laughs> it has like a footrest down there, which is kind of cool. And then trunk and the fuel gauge right there this is really cool I'll show you in just a second what happens with that windows up and down power windows power mirrors um, all kinds of buttons here has two different horns see if the here that horn you press the button 
two different ones. <laughs> kind of cool. All right, and I'll just show you what the gas tanks just did. It has two, not two gas tanks, just two spots to fill your gas tank. So it doesn't matter which side you pull up on the pump, you can use the left or the right side. So kind of cool, you know, obviously not really needed, but kind of one of the neat things with this car. Here is the trunk, which does fit golf clubs. So nice because in the Diablo, they go in the front seat. There's no trunk at all. And it has some neat little options. This is an Aston Martin first aid kit that it came with. The fire extinguisher and the first aid kit just hooks right there. So not sure how rare that is, but I'm guessing it's pretty rare to have a first aid kit in it. And there is decent space back here. A lot nicer than the Esprit or the Diablo. And if you look at the pictures from Dynasty, it had different wheels on it. And I'll try and post those. But these are different and much nicer than the other wheels. And I believe it's a different steering wheel too, because in the picture in Dynasty it's a little different steering wheel. But um, much better choices. I would show you what's under the hood, but it's broken. The latch is jammed and stuck. So for right now, we're just going to have to show you a picture I took earlier of what the, the big V8 in there looks like. It's a really cool, massive engine. So we'll show you the picture of that right now. Very few people know what this is when I'm driving around. People know it's a cool car, but they don't know what it is. And this is really the only way to find out. If you drive up beside it, it says Aston Martin V8 on it right there. And you just see people all the time looking at the car, kind of with a look of shock on their face, like, what is that? And they see the Aston Martin, they're like, oh, it's an Aston Martin. So that's kind of cool. This car, you have to warm up. <laughs> it's carbureted. If you don't let it warm up, it just won't go. Um, once it's warmed up, it's still not a blazing fast car. It was built in the early 80s. That was not a good time for fast cars. It's the height of the emissions controls. Um, see, like right now, it's a little cold. It is just real sluggish. Fitting little drive we're going down as I come from a friend's house <laughs> this car has a 5.3 liter v8 three-speed Chrysler transmission and the transmission does not help it at all with acceleration it there's varying figures on what the actual horsepower is so some people say it's 300 some people say less because of emissions in the United States, some say it's as low as 245. And driving it, I would not be surprised if it is closer to that 245 figure than the 300 figure, just from the feel of it. I mean, it will get going once you get past a certain RPM, but off the line, it just does not go at all. And I'm in a neighborhood here, and I can easily, you know, stick it in first gear and gun it without worried about anything bad happening. It'll get going once you get up to a higher speed, and we'll, we'll do that. But uh, it's definitely not a, a speed race. <laughs> All right, so if you want to know the story of how I bought this car, I saw this car at a car show, the Concourse of Elegance in Denver, three years ago. 
first time I'd ever seen an Aston Martin V8 in person. I loved it. I always knew I loved them when I was a kid. When I saw it in person, I loved it even more. And I knew I wanted one. The problem was values were increasing. I bought my Diablo a little while, four years ago, and it doubled in value. I bought it for 126. It's now worth like 250. It's a 99 Alpine edition. And Aston Martin prices did the same thing. When I first started looking at Aston Martins, didn't really have the money to afford them, but you know, you could get one for 60, 80,000, no problem. They were pretty nice. Then all of a sudden, they're like 200 grand. So I kind of thought maybe my the possibility of me getting one had passed because it was hard to justify spending 150, 200 thousand dollars on an 80s car that's a little slow. Um, now that I've driven one and owned one, I would do it. But I ended up going to a Cars and Coffee last year in 2017 and saw a blue Aston Martin, just like this one, convertible, really good shape. The difference was it had the European chrome bumpers where this one had the American plastic bumpers, which are very ugly. Eventually we'll change those out. And I talked to the guy, I said, hey, great car. We talked for a while, I'm like, hey, if you ever know of anyone who wants to sell one of these, let me know if you want to sell yours. He's like, okay, I might know somebody. Well, a couple weeks later, he emails me and says, yeah, that person who might want to sell one is me. I have two of them. And it turns out the one I saw at the car show was his. So we had the blue one and the red one, this one. And we started talking and he said he you know, fixed up the blue one, how he liked it. He needed to get rid of one of them and he wanted to get rid of this one. He'd had it at an auction and I think the high bid was 139. He decided not to sell it. He'd had it kind of for sale in New York. Um, wasn't really committed to it and then he met me and we started talking it's like I'd love for it to stay in Colorado the guy's very well off has a number of cars including a um, old Lamborghini old Ferraris from the 60s um, and he said hey I'd, I'd probably give you a deal for stays in Colorado so we negotiated for a few months and up figuring out a price at 125 which I think is a steal and bought it the car would not pass emissions so is that his mechanics but actually works in these cars, which is another problem with these, but if you can find one, amazing. And the problem was the exhaust, uh, catalytic converters finally. And so the seller was willing to pay for the labor, all that stuff. And while we're at it, we replaced the exhaust with a custom exhaust. So it sounds much better than stock, much more aggressive, drives much better than stock. And, you know, thinking back on that, knowing that how sluggish the car was when I first saw it, before it had that custom exhaust, I really do think it was in the 240s for horsepower. So, that's how I got the car. Absolutely love it. Once I bought it, you know, I was kind of hesitant when I first drove it because it was sluggish. The brakes didn't work that great. Uh, it's kind of awkward fitting in it, but then I learned how to sit in it right. The exhaust was fixed. It was cold when I drove it, and once it warmed up, it was much better. So it's just been an amazing car since then. Driving again, we'll get on the highway here a little bit and show you what this beast can do. It does okay once it gets up to speed, but just, you know, off the line, it's not very good. Now, there is some confusion. It was confusion for me about what kind of Aston Martin this is. They just call it the V8, pretty much. It's an Aston Martin V8. It's not a Vantage. The Volante means it's a convertible. So it's an Aston Martin V8 Volante. That means it's a V8 convertible. And it was the first V8 Aston Martin made. I think it came out back in 73 with the V8. And the Volante just means convertible. Now some people call it a Vantage, but it's not a Vantage. The Vantage was a special model of the V8. So you had an Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which had more power. They souped it up. Uh, they went, well they had 75 horsepower or something like that. Better suspension, much quicker, faster car. I've never driven one, but from everything I hear, just completely different car, much more performance oriented. They did not make the Volante, the convertible version, with that option until 86. So any Aston Martin convertible before 86 was just the regular V8. It did not have the Vantage package. After 86, you could have had the Vantage Volante, which was a convertible, and the Vantage. So that's one way to differentiate between the two getting close to the highway now. <laughs> like I said, not a super fast car, but it's a really fun car, really cool car. It's a cruiser, you know, it's one you just cruise around
downtown in. You're not trying to race people, not accelerating super fast all the time. You're just enjoying life, relaxing, listening to that V8 rumble behind you, enjoying the leather and seats and luxury all around you, and just having fun. You know, the Diablo, the Esprit are just brute power with the V12 and the V8 twin turbo, and they're so much fun. It's just a lot of fun to have that acceleration, but completely different cars. So we'll get on the highway now. And we'll just so as you can see, it takes some time and some effort to get up to eighty. I had my foot smash down on the accelerator and it doesn't get up there very fast. <laughs> but in the, in the Esprit, it's like you get there too quick to even enjoy it. It's not true, it's pretty enjoyable. But um, like I said, this is not a super fast car, it's a fun, cruiser, enjoyable car. And this car was actually in James Bond, The Living Daylights, that movie, not this exact car, but the V8. And Timothy Dalton drove it. And at that point, Aston Martin was struggling so much they wouldn't give them any cars to use in the movie. They had to find some used ones. And one was a convertible and one was a coupe. So if you want to check that movie out, you can see it. And slight real estate plug, I at one point was thinking about buying that building that's all boarded up. But bought a different one instead. So real estate is the reason why I'm able to drive these cars. Can't help but plug it once in a while, so I apologize for that. transmission, which as you can see, boring, automatic, and on top that's a three-speed, so not my cup of tea. My Diablo's a gated five-speed, the Spree's a five-speed, the 928's a five-speed, the Mustang's a five-speed, the Audi's an automatic, but it's my daily driver. Um, you can actually convert that to manual. They make a kit from Tremec to put a five-speed or possibly even a six-speed manual transmission in this car. That might seem sacrilegious to some people to modify an Aston Martin like this, but it's actually acceptable in a lot of the Aston Martin community if you're making the cars better, if you're improving them. Same thing with the bumpers. A lot of people put the chrome bumpers on instead of the American bumpers, and it increases the value of the car. So I bought this for 125 Like I said, I think it's a good deal. If it would have been a manual, it would have been 200 probably no problem or more. Manuals are much more expensive, much rare. And if you put a manual in this car, even though it didn't come with it originally, it would increase the value of the car as well, just because the drivability would be so much faster, it's much more fun. So that is something I may do in the future. Cost to do that is probably around 25,000 in that range with parts, materials, labor, and all that. And of course I would keep the original parts, materials, all that stuff in case anybody ever wanted to turn it back. But um, that is one option. Another modification you can do on these cars is air intake, some other things, which can push the horsepower up as well. And that's what the owner of this one did with his blue one, modified the air intake, modified the exhaust, did quite a few things to bump the power, and he said it made a huge difference in it. So those could be things I might do in the future too. The big one, the thing I think would just make it a completely different car is the transmission. And I really want to do that at some point, but for the time being, I'm really enjoying the car. It's okay that it's not super fast. I have other fast cars, and it's just kind of like a piece of history, and it's so rare. I drive, just driving around right now, I have so many people pointing and looking at me who, they don't know what it is. They just know it's cool, and they've never seen one before. And then when they drive by and see the Aston Martin, like, oh, that's an Aston Martin, holy cow. Even car people <laughs> will be like, what is that? And so it's just really fun. A lot of people don't know what it is, but the people who do know get really excited just because you don't ever see them. And the guy, you know, we went to a car show this summer, brought both of these, his blue one and this red one, and we're talking, and he thinks these are the only two Aston Martin V8s in Colorado in a year. And he could be right, because I've never seen one. He's never seen one. The Aston Martin Club doesn't have any of them. So that just shows how rare they are where there's, you know, probably 10 or more Diablos. Field acceleration. This is 
what the Diablo sounds like when it's warming up. It is not a quiet car. So I thought I would just show the Diablo next to the Aston. The Aston is actually on, you just can't even hear it because it's so loud over here. So I thought I would compare the Diablo with the Aston Martin real quick, so I said I would do that. And our pop-up camper to give you a three-way comparison of the nicest vehicles we have. Now, um, Diablo, obviously, completely different car. I try to kind of get them lined up to show you the difference. You know, V8 front engine over there with that cool hood scoop. We're well, not scoop, but bump versus the V12, which is in the back, which means your feet are pretty much at the front of the car, which you don't try not to think about that when you're driving it. But it's, it's a fairly safe car. But the Diablo is not a tiny car by any means. I mean, you look at the back of it, and that's just all engine. And the Aston is just is quite a bit bigger. And it's, I mean, the height, the hood, is almost as tall as the roof on the Diablo. It's really not, what, six, eight inches, maybe? And then you can see, it'd probably be easier to see with the top up, but... The Aston Martin's almost a foot taller than the Diablo. Of course, the Diablo is one of the lowest and widest cars ever made, but still gives a good comparison of the two. Oh, cool cars, completely different cars, completely different animals. I love them both. They're both really fun to drive. The Diablo is just fast and raw. And Aston Martin is just classy and cool. And yes, my Diablo is dusty, it's dirty. I drive them both. I just drove the Diablo yesterday. And actually, no, two days ago. Drove this one yesterday. So, that's the two cars. Both amazing, awesome vehicles. Super rare. And I'm super fortunate and lucky to be able to own both of them. Hey, we're going to pick up the Aston Martin to Scudiera. Um, I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I've owned it for three months and just now getting it after they did some work on it and different things. So we'll see if it's out in the parking lot or if it's inside or not, but we should be pulling up here really quick. Right up here. Oh, there it is. Oh, next to a Ferrari. So that's the Aston Martin. We'll get out and take a look at it and we can finally drive it <laughs> after three months. <laughs> Alright, so hope you like the video of the cars. I am in my new office now. We should have the Invest for More logo back here soon, but uh, just moved in. So I want to talk a little bit about myself and how I got the cars. I fell in love with cars when I was a kid. My sister actually got me a Fastest Cars in the World book when I was five or six. I still have that book. And in that book are the Aston Martins, the Esprits, the Lamborghinis, the Mustang, the 928, and I just signed with my wife last night how much that influenced me and how much I love those cars. They just seem to have so much more character back then than the cars now. I know the cars now will blow the doors off of all of mine, but I think mine are so much more unique and I just love them because of that. Um, like I said, I am in real estate. I've been very fortunate to be able to afford these cars. 
that has come from being an agent, a broker. I just started Blue Steel Real Estate, which came from the Diablo and Esprit partially and because I love Zoolander. Um, and I am an investor too, flip houses. I've got 20 flips going right now, flipped 26 houses last year, I have rental properties. Uh, one reason I started my brokerage was I bought a 68,000 square foot commercial building, had space to put my own office into there. And I talk about all that in my blog. So if people are interested about how I made my money, what I do in real estate, all that stuff, it's all on my blog, investformore.com. That's invest, F-O-U-R-M-O-R-E.com. I've got six books I've written that are paperback, Kindle, and three of those are audio books too. So check those out if you're interested. And uh, please like the video, leave comments if you have questions. I try to respond to everything. If you want to subscribe, uh, we have videos on just about every before and after on my flips, rentals, advice videos on real estate, and the occasional car video too. And I will link to the videos of the Diablo, the Esprit, and the 928 if you want to see those too. So just scroll down to the description and I'll have a link of those available. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see what I get next.